Okay, so we're looking at treatment of flexor hallucis longus. There's also going to be some flexor digitorum longus in there as well. Uh, to know where it is, we need to know some of the anatomy. So flexor is going to be on the underside of the foot. Hallucis, big toe, hallux, and digitorum is going to be the four digits of metatarsals or phalanges, two to five. So those muscles are going to be in large part tendon, but we can still work through them. And we're going to come from the big toe, just the ball of the big toe just there, avoid putting too much pressure, and then we can put some pressure down into the plantar surface of the foot. So we have got a few other things going on in there. I'm just going to talk about those as I work through. We've got abductor hallucis longus, we've got flexor digitorum brevis, and we've also got abductor digiti minimi. So they sound like a bit of a mouthful, but what that's saying is that we've got three muscles, abductor hallucis longus, flexor digitorum longus, and abductor digiti minimi. The reason I'm talking about them is because they're quite superficial and they all insert into the anterior calcaneus. So that's the point where we're gonna get pain as plantar fasciitis, and we're having to work through those three muscle groups to get to the underlying flexor hallucis longus and flexor digitorum longus. So working with transverse longitudinal, I should say, working with longitudinal strokes with a reinforced thumb. And you'll feel what feels like bubble wrap through here. What that actually is, is interstitial fluid. When we're upright, we're on two feet, fluids are gonna travel south. So we can end up with those, particularly around the ankle, if you've got any swelling, any edema, any effusion, the knee, the ankle, and we can help by moving that along, working through this, aiming to feel that bubble wrap move along aid in that lymphatic, lymphatic drainage. So we've got longitudinal strokes, we've also got transverse, and we can strum across the fibers. I'd recommend using a reinforced thumb. I'm keen for you to see exactly what it is that I'm doing. So I'm trying to keep digits and hand out of the way. And when we get to that anterior calcaneus, you'll feel that bony ridge there. We're gonna take that pressure off. Don't stop everything that you're doing but just take the pressure off. It can irritate to put too much force down into that bony prominence, and that common insertion. So we need to trace flexor hallucis and flexor digitorum longus up, and they're gonna come medially, in between the medial malleolus and the calcaneus. So somewhere just in there, and that's where we've got the Tom, Dick, and Harry group. We've got tibialis posterior, T for Tom. We've got flexor digitorum longus, D for Dick. And then Harry, we've got flexor hallucis longus, borrowing the H from hallucis. Tom, Dick, Harry. Helps you to remember what's in there, because that's all there pretty much is, between the Achilles and the medial malleolus, and also the order of them. So we have got um, calcaneus in there, a bit of talus deep to that as well, and then tibia, just as we go superiorly. So you might think there's not much there. There are some tendons on the top though, and there's also retinaculum. So all of my strokes here are gonna be quite superficial and I'm not putting too much pressure, keeping broad palms. And now's a good time for some joint polishing as well. So using the thinner eminence of my thumbs, we're gonna polish, in inverted commas, both sides of the calcaneus. And then we're gonna to continue to work up. Now here we're thinking calf. Most people would think calf, and they'd be correct, because it is the calf. However, that's just the superficial compartment. We take that all off and underneath, we've got tibialis posterior sits in the middle, we mentioned that before, but we've also got flexor hallucis longus, so that's gonna come up from the big toe and switch to the lateral side. And then we've got flexor digitorum longus, which comes from the lateral side and makes the switch to the medial. So of course, we'll have to work through gastrocnemius and soleus to get there, but that can be done. And we're not really gonna be massively efficient in targeting those muscles individually, but knowing that they're under there is gonna to help to inform our treatment. So it's not just gonna stop at the ankle. We blindly think it must end somewhere around there. No, these two muscles go all the way just underneath the back of the knee. So to treat those, the first and most important thing is to get through the bigger, bulkier muscles of the calf, gastrocnemius and soleus. That's gonna take some time. So that's all the standard massage techniques that you might use in your practice. Effleurage and petrissage. And really do make sure that you spend enough time working through those. 
I'm not saying that you'll be able to palpate the underlying structures of the deep compartment, but otherwise we're just kind of banging our fist into a bit of a brick wall there with the calf. It's going to be unpleasant for them. It's going to be ineffective for you as a therapist. So that's a very basic treatment of the flexors of the toes.